Years ago, I heard them say, Final Fantasy is dead. It long since shriveled into a husk of its former self, diverting into an MMO for whatever reason, and choosing to rehash Final Fantasy VII instead of making something new and interesting. And when they did, where they went was such a departure that had it not been for a chocobo living in some dude's afro, we'd have no idea what game we were playing. That was then. A few years later, and we're living in a mirrored world, where Final Fantasy's salvation comes in the form of, well, an MMO playing with what it means to be a Final Fantasy game, and a 3DS outing that might not have those very words in the title, but we know what the score is. It's four heroes, of light, lining up across from bad guys, taking turns and beating the hell out of each other. It's the RPGs you loved from back then, revamped to be fun now with smarter mechanics. It's got a title that makes no freaking sense the first time you hear it. It's bravely default, and it's seriously got my hopes up. Your band of heroes includes Shepherd Boy turned hero Tiz, the Wind Vestal with a price on her head Agnes, the amnesiac pickup artist Ringabel, and orphanage matron turned sorceress Idea. At least I think three of those are right. An evil empire's been stirring up shit and it's your task to protect the crystals of earth, fire, water, and wind, so to keep the natural balance and... You know, the more and more I go on with this explanation, the more and more I just want to stop and go, imagine a sequel to Final Fantasy V that's more awesome than Final Fantasy V if such a thing could exist. Not like Four Heroes of Light, the earlier DS title, that used a similar job system but dialed the complexity back a bit. This game turns the dial the other way, affording more customization, more fiddly bits, and even more control over battles thanks to braving and defaulting. Just watch. Through use of these eponymous abilities, your fighters can either stockpile turns and go on the defense, or spend future turns to attack right freaking now. Aside from that, it's your standard turn-based RPG, albeit one with a lot of depth thanks to an extensive job system and layer after layer of strategy, where one of your greatest resources is your friends. That's right, your 3DS friends actually play a huge part in your single-player experience, as you can tie your character's job levels to those of a friend and let them fake knowing abilities and powers far beyond their current level. Also, you can choose to send any action to your friends, or any street passers-by, who will receive it upon updating their online data, and then can use you as a summon attack. That's right, it's not just for Keiji Nafune and Hyperdimension Neptunia anymore. And even if you're a friendless loser, you can still get random attacks from random folks once per day. It's like a wonder trade of beatdowns. Unlike in Final Fantasy V, where you're given jobs by exploding crystals or regurgitating chocobos, in Bravely Default, they're obtained by defeating the pawns of the Empire in combat. No, I'm not sure why they're called asterisks either, but the net result is you've got a healthy level of character customization, as each member of your team has room for a main job's commands plus the powers of a support class. Interestingly, the equipment system allows for any job to equip any weapon or armor, so you don't have to worry about sudden bouts of nudity when you switch. Each class has different aptitudes, though, so your time mage is going to get more out of a staff than, say, a great spear. Not that you can't be a rebel, though. No one expects a healer with great spear proficiency. Hey, everyone! When you hear one of my numbers... We go wild! But more so than anything else, Bravely Default just hits all the notes we expect Final Fantasy to hit. Slightly anachronistic, airship-laden, swords and sorcery world, evil empire, what needs to be stopped, goofy enough to be entertaining, while still capable of shocking you with some A-tier evil. Thoroughly adaptable, with plenty of side quests for extra rewards and a whole village to restore using your connections. A bright soundtrack that gets brassy at all the right moments, almost reminding me of Disgaea. A heck of a lot of tinkering, ultimately resulting in big numbers and sweet comeuppance for your enemies. In short, everything that was missing from Final Fantasy XIII. So even though it doesn't bear the name, rest assured that Bravely Default is the return to form you've been waiting for for so long. I waited a long time for the true Matrix-style, chibi 3D remake of Final Fantasy V. What I ended up getting was something so much better.